You, sir. Let me get my coat. Yeah, take your time. Take your time. We're going to wait for you. <clears throat> How come you brought, brought the snow? That's what I want to know. Okay, we're now joined by the Michigan State offense. Offensive coordinator Jim Bowman, center Jack Allen, wide receiver Aaron Burbridge, and quarterback Connor Cook. Gentlemen, welcome, and uh, Coach, your thoughts about the game. Well, good morning to everyone. Uh, certainly, we're all excited to be here. Uh, great honor for us to be back in the second year in a row, but you know, to be in, to be in the playoffs is another dimension uh, for us and our program. And certainly proud to be here, but excited. A lot of fun, and the Cotton Bowl always does a great job treating us very, very well. Okay, we'll take questions. We'll start right over here in the front left side. Tony Cornish, Jr., WTBY TV in Dothan. Question for Connor. On the health front, how are you feeling right now? Any, you know, lingering after effects, anything like that? You waiting for that first hit. Everybody wants to know. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling great. You know, I uh, practiced uh, yesterday and the day before. Felt, felt really good. The time off, uh, going back home, doing some extra rehab stuff, obviously helped out a lot. But um, shoulder's feeling good. Feeling good. 100%. You got it. <clears throat> we got a question here in the front right, and then we'll go to the left. Reginald Atula, UTA Communications. Coach, you talked about how obviously you were here last year, but being in the playoff semifinal is just a completely di different animal. Uh, can you just talk more about that and how you know different it feels to be here? Well, you know, certainly there's a there's a little extra excitement if there can be. You know, when you when you get in in, in one of these these final big six the, these games, you know, when you're in the final 12 teams in the country, you, you're you're always playing a great opponent um, but when you're in the final four tournament uh, you, you know we all know and, and talk about what's it in the end you know the, the possibilities of, of continuing but you got to take it one game at a time especially now um, so certainly there is a little more added excitement to, to the game no question but again thankful to be here um, blessed to be here and, and, and I think our whole outfit feels that same way we got a question on the aisle, left side. Jeff Spiegel, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. This is for Jack and also for Connor. The Alabama guys were just in here and they were talking about their defensive line teammates, uh, describing them as savages and caged animals and things like that. When you look at their defensive line on film, um, what's your take on those guys? Um, I would say up front, they rotate 11 guys. They're all very talented. They have great hand placement. They're big athletic guys, very physical. But uh, we rotate guys in the O-line too, so I think both units will be fresh throughout the game, but they're a very, very good football team. Yeah, I think they're uh, everything you want in the D-line. You know, they got the depth. Um, and then obviously, I mean, the talent, the talent's there. Everyone sees that. They got the size. They got the uh, speed, uh, ath athleticism, um, everything you want. And um, it's obviously going to be a challenge, and we're ready, we're ready for it. Got a question in the middle, about halfway back on the left. The, this is a question for Jack Allen, uh, Tom Rinaldi with ESPN. Jack, uh, December 20th, if I'm getting the date right, you had a really interesting day. You had to make a decision about graduation versus some other things. Can you just take us through what that day was like? Um, well, Coach D gave us the option. If you wanted to go walk graduation, you could. And uh, you just have to show up a little earlier. and go through everything that we went through later, but um, for me, I thought you only get to do something like this once, so I'd rather do that or do this than go and walk at graduation. Yeah. After um, I packed up my car, drove home, and Got home as fast as I could to watch my brother in the wrestling tournament. Questions? We'll take here and then we'll go to the back. On the left hand <laughs> side, and then we'll go, we've got a question on the uh, platform. Right behind you. <clears throat> 
Coach Bowman, uh, Ken Caps with uh, Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Uh, you have three uh, high school players from the state of Texas, three freshmen on your team from Texas this year. Tell me a little bit about Michigan State's philosophy, philosophy in recruiting Texas, and uh, how do you how do you cut through through all the other Texas schools down here? Well, I, I think that uh, most of our long distance recruiting. Not all, but most of it, there's usually been some kind of tie, whether it's a family tie or uh, maybe a relative, uh, neighbor, something. There has to be something to get somebody uh, interested in, in, in us. You know, it's not a, uh, a general philosophy that we would go real, real far from home. And, and uh, you know, all recruiting can be different within a, a, a program. You know, sometimes a coach has been there an assistant coach who's been uh, that's his hometown or uh, you know like we have we have a a coach on our staff who's who's been in texas terry samuel and and uh and ron burton has recruited texas a long time from when he was at the air force so there's there's some connections that you build where you can have the the the, the common element of trust you know when you uh, just go somewhere and and you don't know uh, much about anything at all that you're getting into. I don't know that that's a, a great situation for you, but when you have some people that are there that you can trust, um, uh, it, it, it can work out very well. And that's, that's one of the situations for us there, even though it hasn't been a frequent thing, it, it, maybe it can be a little more than it has been. And that's kind of reflective on some of the other areas that we've gone to in the, in the past. We've got a question on the platform all the way in the rear. Tom and Eno, WVTM TV in Birmingham. This is for all three of the players. Um, I believe it was Connor who said on, uh, on Selection Sunday when you guys found out you were coming here that you don't really mind being the underdog. Is it possible to enjoy that, you know, being the underdog and playing that role? And also, how can that impact at all your mentality for preparations going into the game? Uh, yeah, you know, we always like, you know, being the underdog uh, for as much, you know, disrespect or people always underestimating us. Um, we, we embrace it. Um, it's, it's a role that we're pretty comfortable playing, and um, it's just, you know, it's what we are. You know, we've always kind of been the underdog. You know, going back to my, um, you know, freshman year here when I was redshirting, you know, a lot of those games even, um, when we had guys like Kirk Cousins playing and, and B.J. Cunningham and Keyshawn Martin, you know, big-time guys, and obviously a great defense. People still under, underestimated us. Um, so it's just a, it's a role we're comfortable playing. Um, we embrace it. Uh, we enjoy it. And um, we just go out there and have fun. Question in the middle left, and then come to the front. For, uh, for Aaron and uh, for Connor, you guys have won six games this year by a touchdown or less. What's the key to doing that? Um, <clears throat> it's all about finishing. You know, Coach D always talks about, um, you know, finishing all the workouts that we've had, you know, going back to winter conditioning, uh, the workouts in the spring, summer. Um, we put a, a big emphasis on, on finishing the workouts, and, and after every single workout, um, we have a thing called the finisher, and different guys come up with something different, whatever it is. You know, you walk in, Coach Manny would be like, hey, you know, Burridge, you got, you got the finisher today. So Burr would come up with a workout, whatever, that, you know, during the workout, he'd think of something. So as soon as we were done with the stuff that was required, we would do what, uh, what Burb had in mind. So um, it's all about finishing, you know, no matter what, you know, the outcome is or, or the score, you know, we could be losing, whatever it is, as long as we, you know, push forward, um, you know, finish the game, uh, usually good things will happen. Yeah, just like Connor says, it's about finishing. It's also uh, about the chemistry we have on this team. You know, we trust each other. Like, I know Connor's going to make that pass. He's going to make that catch. I know Jack's going to uh, get his block. You know, we just know we, uh, we can trust each other and get the job done. Okay, we got a question on the front, and then we're going to go to the back. Coach Bowman, prior to the 21 Capital One Bowl, Coach Saban said this, and you weren't here, but he said this about the Michigan State offense, quote, they're stubborn, they'll keep trying to establish the run, unquote. How important is it in this game to not just go back to the well with run, but for there to be balance, so they're keep, you have to make them guess? Well, you've always heard me talk about the threat of balance, you know, and I really believe that. Um, in most games that we play, not only a, in a giant game like this, but uh, you know, you, you have to be able to, to, to do both aspects of the game. I, I really think they, they, they help each other. Um, but you know, uh, different about this game, there's no weather factor. 
you know that and you know you can get in some situations where uh, like an Ohio State game you know if if, if it was difficult for both teams to throw the ball because of the weather. Well, you don't have that situation here. But uh, certainly with Alabama's defensive line, uh, they're going to affect both aspects of the game too. So, uh, you know, the challenge is always beginning up front. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, the, the lines really, both offensively and defensively, uh, because you know, Jack and his compadres give everybody else a chance to do their job. So uh, that's where things start. And, and again, uh, you know, you put it in perspective of if you were going to sit there and throw it all the time and those guys were going to rush every single time, you know, then you put it, put it again the other way. You're going to run every single time. Uh, they're going to bring more guys in the box, this and that. So we have to keep doing one thing to counteract the other. So that'll be the approach, as it always is. Question on the outside left, and then we'll go to the rear. Tom Spouse, the New York Times. This is for uh, Connor and Aaron. Connor first. Everybody's dissected and broken down what kind of quarterback you are, your style. Uh, what do you see yourself as a quarterback, and is there a quarterback in the NFL that you might compare yourself to as far as styles goes? Um, you know, obviously I'm not a dual threat by any means. Um, but a, a quarterback that I admire a lot is Tom Brady, um, even though he went to Michigan. Um, I, I like the way he plays. Um, you know, he's a winner, too. Um, he's always accurate, and, and, and no matter what is going on in the game, he, I think he always puts his team in the right situation to go out there and win and, um, and be successful. And um, I think he makes the guys around him better. I mean, there's times where, you know, guys get hurt and he doesn't have all the weapons, but um, he brings guys together and, um, and leads them to victory. We got a question in the rear. Chris Brees, WIT in Birmingham. Uh, Connor, yeah, back here to your right. And Alabama had said you had never, there's a def, no defense you had never seen in all of your years starting here. Question for all three of you. Uh, is that the mentality you have? Do you see in every defense, or does Alabama bring something different? Um, you know, obviously, we have seen a lot of defenses. We've gone up against a lot of great opponents, um, great, great defenses, and, I mean, Alabama, Obviously, we haven't faced them yet, but I mean, just watching them on film, I mean, they look like an NFL defense um, in size, speed, uh, the hits that they that they put on on their opponents. Um, so really, I mean, the thing that really stands out, obviously, I mean, I was walking in here and, and walked past some of their defensive linemen. They're they're some big guys. So, um, like I said earlier, they're everything you want in a D line. Um, very talented. Um, they do some things a little different that, than other opponents that we've faced, um, and we'll we'll be ready for it. But I mean. Um, I mean, they have great, great players, and uh, it's going to be a challenge. You guys want to come? Yeah. We played a lot of good defenses. You know, Alabama, you know, they're good defense, but we're up for the challenge, and I feel like we match up well against them. No doubt. Um, yeah, they have a different, a uh, couple different wrinkles on defense, and they do stuff a little differently. But at the same time, each team has had a couple weeks to prepare now, so I think both teams will be prepared for the game and the little wrinkles that each team has. We've got two questions in the middle. We'll take here and then across. This one is for uh, Connor and Jack, Jay Sarkar, WLNS. Uh, guys, yesterday, Darian Harris talked about how the senior classes before you kind of set the precedent with the Rose Bowl and the Cotton Bowl win last year. Now you guys are back in the Cotton Bowl with a chance to win in the college football playoffs. So just how much has all the build-up to this game been, what you guys have been able to accomplish, but also just kind of looking back in hindsight at what the seniors' classes before you taught you guys coming into your senior year? Um, you're on. Go ahead. Is it, is it not? All right. Uh, there's been four great senior classes ahead of us, and I think all of us seniors have taken something from all those guys that were leaders, and I think another big thing is they started and created a great culture, and each year I think it's just improved and gotten better and better, and that's why I think we're so good because of our chemistry. Yeah, um, to pick off right where uh, Jack was saying, um, it's about the chemistry, and I, and I remember um, when I was a redshirt sophomore, you know, playing for the first time, and, and when we won the Rose Bowl, I mean, 
um, the seniors would just take everyone in. And it wasn't, didn't matter if you were sophomore, freshman, whatever. Um, everyone in the senior class, they were always, you know, they'd always had open arms to everyone. And, and I think that's a, a big reason why we've been so successful is the chemistry. Um, and then the next year, same thing. I mean, everyone is so close, so tight, um, where it just provides us to go out there and play at the highest level just because everyone um, is unselfish and wants everyone else to be successful. Um, so really, that, that's the main thing, I think, is like Jack said, the culture. Um, and, that, and that means just the chemistry that, that's, that's been a big reason for our success. Question in the middle about halfway back. To Jack and Connor again, as you well know, Coach D, uh, football is important, but it's not bigger than life. How has that rubbed off on this program, and how does it help you in moments like this when um, it's probably not as big a deal as we all even make it, and it just it, it, does, it, does it affect you positively and how you prepare? Yeah, de definitely. He uh, always kind of puts stuff in perspective. Yes, it's a very important football game. It's on a huge stage, possibility to play for national championship, but at the same time, there's bigger things in life, and you just have to make sure you have your priorities set. Yeah, um, you know, when we first got down here, Coach D obviously said the main priority is to win, um, but also enjoy yourself. You know, take, take everything in. Uh, you know, take a moment at practice to look around, you know, soak everything in. Um, you know, whether if it's at practice, whether if it's at the hotel or uh, an activity that we're doing to just, you know, enjoy it. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a business trip. And it's a really, really big game. But also, at the same time, um, he wants us to, to have fun, to, uh, you know, Take it all in, smell the roses, I guess. Got a question here in the front. Uh, Rachel, speaker, UTA communication. <clears throat> For all three of you, y'all had the rhetoric of finishing, but walk me through how you start. What do you do before a game as a team to mentally prepare, relax, and just get ready? You listen to John Mayer Radio. <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody has their own little way of getting ready, but uh, before the game, we we'll usually watch a highlight tape as a team, but. Before that, everybody has their own different routine, and it's kind of what everyone does. Yeah, like they say, everybody got their own little routine. I like to listen to music. <laughs> got a question on the aisle, the middle. Hi, uh, here, Bill Bender, Sporting News. Uh, Aaron and Connor, this question's for you. Obviously, Aaron, you've had kind of a breakout season, <laughs> a bunch of catches, a bunch of catches in the Big Ten Championship game as well. So what went into the, the chemistry that you two have developed in the passing game? Well, you know, I think the best thing a quarterback and receiver can do to develop chemistry is just throw. I mean, really go out there, throw routes on air. Um, and that all started, you know, ever since Burb and I were freshmen here. Um, I was a retro freshman. He was a true freshman. And uh, he, we were working with the twos a little bit. And then Burb obviously started working with the ones and has been playing ever since. But, um, I mean, we developed chemistry right, right away. And it's all the times that we spent after practice, before practice, um, during the summer. Um, you know, doing seven on seven, just throwing routes, showing up on a, on a Saturday, on an off day or Sunday, whatever it is, um, you know, climbing the fence to get in when, when all the doors were locked, uh, just to go out there and throw and, and get better and just try and develop that chemistry. Question in the middle right. This is a question for Connor Cook, uh, Lance Crawford, WPMI in Mobile, Alabama, right over here, Connor. You said you enjoy being the underdogs, yet all the winning this program has enjoyed over the last three years especially. How is that possible? Why are you always the underdog? And were you to beat Alabama, wouldn't that finally put it to bed? Uh, well, I don't know why we're the underdog. I think you guys know the answer to that probably better than us. But, uh, you know, maybe it would. You know, obviously playing a, a team like Alabama, a team in the SEC, um, you know, you look at the teams in the SEC and they've pretty much owned it the last decade, it seems like. So um, uh, beating, beating them hopefully would put it to rest. But, I mean, even if it didn't, I mean, I mean, we just go out there and we play. It doesn't matter for the underdog. If not, I mean, realistically, you know, even though we do like, you know, being the underdog and we embrace it and stuff and gives us that extra edge, um, we're going to go out there and give it our all no matter what. We've got a question on the rear by the platform. Taylor Tannenbaum, WTBY in Dothan, Alabama. I know you compared yourself a little bit to Tom Brady, but in the other room, uh, one of the defenders said they've been referring to you as Peyton Manning. What's your thought about that comparison? And Aaron, this is your quarterback. Uh, what's your analysis? Do you feel like he's a Tom Brady, Peyton Manning type? So this is for both of you. Um, well, I, I don't know if I was comparing myself to Tom Brady. I was saying a quarterback that I admire. Um, Tom Brady is obviously very, very good. Uh, but um, what was the, the next or the last question? The second one? Sorry. 
They compared you a little bit. Oh, it's Peyton Manning. They've been calling yeah. you the Peyton Manning. Thing. Well, that, that's a great compliment also. You know, Peyton Manning is obviously a very, very good quarterback. Um, and I really only thing I, I got to say to that is just appreciate it. Yeah, he uh, Connor is the best quarterback in the nation in my eyes. You know, he's a competitor. You know, he'll go out there and make a mistake. He can bounce right back, you know. So I don't know if I compare him to uh, Tom or Peyton, but, yeah, like he said, it's, it's a, a good compliment. Got a question in the middle? Right. This is for uh, all three of the players. You guys are going to go visit the Children's Hospital in a couple hours. Just, you know, for how much you get out of the game of football and being able to play it, what does it mean to each of you to just be able to give back and bring a smile to these kids' faces? And how much enjoyment do you take out of that? Yeah, it's really good. Um, you know, we just go out there and we play a game that we love, and it's amazing the things that, you know, other, how other people view it and how you can impact someone uh, just by playing a sport that you love. You've been playing ever since you, you're a little kid. But, um, Anytime we can go to a hospital, anytime we can go meet kids, um, the youth camps that we've had over the summer, um, just working with, with kids that are, you know, 10 to 12 to 13 years old, whatever, and just to see how pumped they get to be around us, and especially going to a hospital and someone who's sick or injured, whoever, um, to see a smile light up on their face and to see how excited they get just to see us. Um, it's a humbling feeling, and, and we embrace it, and we, we, we enjoy it for sure. Um, I would say... People that are going through a rough time or things aren't going their way just to make them feel better for five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, that's worth it. But uh, at the same time, too, it kind of puts things in perspective, like uh, the question we had before. Uh, like, yeah, you go through tough times during football, and this is a huge college football game, but there's bigger, more important things going on out there than football. So it kind of keeps everything in line. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, just by playing football and, you know, just going to a children's hospital, how you can impact somebody's life. You know, that puts a smile on my face, too. So, you know, I embrace it and I love it. we got time for one final question for, co for the coach or the student athletes. Got a question on the front. <clears throat> Jack, for your questions for you, you know what Connor can do as a quarterback. He's proven himself. But with them coming after him and you needing his arm, how much do you as the leader of that offensive line talk about this game coming down to you guys giving him time to throw? Um, I think most games come down to the trenches, and it's one up front usually. Uh, if we're not blocking or not protecting, they can't make plays and vice versa. But uh, it's going to be huge, and it's definitely going to be a big challenge for us. But we faced a lot of big challenges this year, and I think we're ready to take it. Or, uh, Take it head on. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. We're going to let you go next door to the other room. If you guys want any of these pins or pennants or any of that stuff, help yourself. Coach, thank you.